Hi, Morgan here for Winfinity, and I've been doing a little experimenting. I read something the other day about quote unquote reclaimed, salvaged, rustic, barnwood, whatever you want to call it, and why it's so dang expensive. Well, for starters, it's trendy. And for whatever reason, that puts it in high demand. So a lot of folks will take new lumber, distress it, and use various finishing techniques to imitate the look of old wood and capture that market. One characteristic of truly old lumber that's difficult to replicate is these arced blade marks. Back in the day, a lot of sawmills used to use huge circular blades to mill up lumber, which is what gives old lumber salvaged from old buildings these deep arced blade marks. I've seen a number of ways people have tried to emulate it, but none of those ways seem all that authentic. I used my journeyman to imitate that signature arc blade mark that people are just dying to have for some reason. My test piece was five and a half inches wide by 32 inches long. The circular blades used at these long gone sawmills usually range from 20 inches up to around 78 inches, sometimes more. So I went middle of the road and simulated a 36 inch diameter blade. By the way, I did all the design work on my iPad with the Apple Pencil with an app called Shaper 3D then exported the vectors as DXFs and imported them into VCar. So we'll put a link in the description for you. I spaced each gouge one and a quarter inch apart and decided to use a three quarter inch diameter straight bit to make the cuts. I made a little jig and secured the part to the wasteboard with the highest point right around four inches above the wasteboard and the lowest point one inch. I set the deepest part of the cut to 15 thousandths of an inch. So I need to figure out how when I move the bit over by one and a quarter inch, how much lower I'll need to set the cutting depth to achieve the same depth from cut to cut. It's no secret, I'm terrible at math, just absolutely awful, but that's why we have computers. What I found was I need to move the bit down by 0.1172 inches every time. Once I figured that out, I exported the sketch as a DXF and brought it into VCarve. I set the job up as 34 inches wide and seven and a half inches high because I wanted to give myself an extra inch on all four sides for the bent to plunge. And I set my material thickness as four inches. I had to go one by one, creating a separate profile toolpath for each arc. <sighs> I selected a three quarter inch diameter end mill cutting on the outside of the vectors because I only want the edge of the bit doing the cutting and the majority of it hanging over the lower side of the board. The first tool path will be the arc furthest to the right, and it's only, again, 15 thousandths of an inch deep. Then I just go down the line, tool pathing each subsequent arc to cut 0.1172 inches deeper than the last to get uniform cuts following the downward slope of the material. I also had to change the number of passes for each tool path to one. And since there's no tool change required, I saved all 26 tool paths to one file. I got the material up on the wasteboard, secured it in place, and zeroed out my X and Y axes on the center of the board. When I probed for Z, I made sure the edge of the bit that would be doing the cutting was lined up with the edge of the board. This part's crucial. I created these tool paths as though the material was four inches thick, so I have to register from where the board's actually sitting four inches above the wasteboard. With all my axes set, I loaded the program on the controller and ran it. And it came out pretty much exactly as expected. So that's it. You can play around with different spacing, the shape of the arc, mess around with different bits, whatever, go nuts. And that's a wrap. If you found any of this helpful and you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks and hit that notification bell so that you'll know next time we post a new video. All right, thanks for watching. Hope to see you all on the next one. Y'all be good.